Welcome back to the Morning Plan. Our next guest is a Milwaukee native and best-selling author. Nick Petrie has joined us on the Yellow Couch before, and now he is back to talk about the latest book in his super popular series. This is The Wild One, number five in the Peter Ash series. So we want to know what the inspiration is for this book. That's right. Nick is here to spill the beans about Peter Ash, a war veteran who seems to be losing his fight against post-traumatic claustrophobia. It's really good to have you here again. Oh, thanks so much yeah, for nice having me Nice to back. see you. I yeah. really appreciate it. So yeah. tell us a little bit about this adventure of your main character. Well, so this the the uh, book started, I, I, we didn't go to Iceland thinking about writing a book. I went with my son to go on a backpacking trip across the Hornstrandir mm -hmm. Nature Reserve. And uh, it was this astonishing adventure. We get dropped off by boat. There are no roads in. You know, we're supposed to crisscross this peninsula and get picked up by a boat five days later. <laughs> um, Whoa. And uh, and it was this really, is the real thing. This no, this is, is this son. is yeah. This is this is real life. And and this was a little bit more of an adventure than we'd planned on. It was you know you could throw a rock and hit the Arctic Circle. It was really that kind of a that kind of a thing. But in the airport on the way home, this whole book sort of showed up in my head, um, which has never happened before. Usually huh. usually I sort of start at the beginning and work my way through. And it was it was like it was like having some sort of a vision sort of show up yeah. in my yeah. head. And I had about 20 minutes where I could just scribble notes in my little notebook, which I carry with me everywhere, uh, before it disappeared. And then I spent the next year trying to sort of reassemble that I into this book. Even the ending, right? The beginning, the middle, and the end, well, you had all kind of in your head. Yes, which, which is, and, and this was actually a challenging book to write, and that was part of the challenge, is I'd never tried to write a book sort of knowing what it all was before. Um, Interesting. I'm, I'm the sort of writer that uh, writers call a seat of the pants writer. <laughs> uh, oh, which, that one. Well, which I'm just making it up as we go along. Do you have writer's block normally then? Well, it's, uh, so I sort of think that I, it, it would be easier if I sort of knew the whole story and I could write forward, but, but I've tried to work that way and it doesn't, that doesn't work for me. I lose huh. interest and if I'm bored, my reader is definitely going to be bored. So I sort of discover the story at the same time as my as my reader does. Yeah. Um, and then at, at you know after I finish that draft, I go back and polish it up and make sure all everything sort of ties together. But it's a, it, it's a it is the uh, least efficient way of writing a novel I can imagine. But it's the it's the only <laughs> way I've got. So. Yeah. Until this one. Well, yeah, but that was part of the challenge with this one too, is because well part of it was that I I uh, I'm a mountain biker and I had a fairly spectacular mountain bike accident. Right. Um, so tore all the tendons in my shoulder, surgery, um, and, and my, my agent's first uh, response to the text was, but you can still type, right? Oh my goodness, um, not how are funny. you? Uh, yeah. you know, well, she's, she's kind of old school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so, you know, with uh, surgery and pain meds and all the rest of it, so that, you know, it, this was a, a challenging book to write, but yeah. um, the, the early reviews and the responses from, from readers and my publisher and it have been kind of astonishing. So mm. uh, it's been, it's, uh, it, it, it worked out well so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Peter Ash is a war veteran. I know you talk with veterans too, to kind of understand I their do. experience. And he sort of revisited, PTSD sort of revisits him. And, and I wonder if you ever have the sense that, that veterans never really get over war. Oh, I, I think that's really true. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a veteran myself, but I, I, I still talk to veterans mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis. I, I do, there's uh, Facebook messages back and forth, or, or people come up to me at, at events. Um, and I know Vietnam vets who are still dealing with it every day, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's dreams or, or memories or panic attacks or uh, any of that stuff. And I, one of the reasons why I started writing about this character is that I, I had met vets coming back after the surge, and it was really clear to me that um, that most Americans really didn't understand the toll that this took. And, and it, you didn't have to be a Green Beret mm -hmm. um, to, to have this affect you. Uh, and then diving into post-traumatic stress itself, you know, more Americans have post-traumatic stress than we really realize. Um, anything from an assault or, or going through a natural disaster, these are all things that, that can really mess with our brains. Mm -hmm. um, there are some studies that say that inner city kids um, basically, if you're, if you're you know, worried for your safety when you're walking to school, mm -hmm. you know, those are the things that can cause post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. And his is, is post-traumatic stress claustrophobia, correct? Right, and that's, it's, post-traumatic stress takes many, many different forms. Mm -hmm. um, they're really, it's really unique to the individual. So what, what stressors were you under? You know, how, how do you respond normally? Um, claustrophobia, for me, was just a more interesting uh, that had storytelling possibilities mm -hmm. um, for me to have a character who couldn't go inside. Um, for long periods of time, who really would rather be outside, and I'm actually a guy who would always rather be outside. Mm -hmm. um, 
But, uh, and especially sending Peter to Iceland in the middle of the winter, um, you know, is really going to mess with him. And, and as the books progress, what I'm trying to do is to sort of show the, the pathways that veterans can take to uh, not so much get better, but to, but to yeah, but, to, but to, to deal with this. And, mm -hmm. and, and there are really some known methodologies that, that work but to sort of show that progress, but it's not a smooth progress. And, and so with this book, Peter gets knocked back down pretty hard yeah. uh, and has to work his way through. Most progress isn't smooth. No, right? it's not. Lots yeah. of ups no, and downs. No, no. Yep. Maybe some breakdowns in between. Here's yeah. some book signings you got. You got three coming up. You can first get the book at nickpetrie.com, but otherwise go to one of his book signings. Tonight you're at Boswell. That's at 7 o'clock. Um, on Wednesday the 22nd at 6.30, you're going to be at the Whitefish Bay Library, home for you. And on the 23rd on Thursday at 7 o'clock, you're going to be at Books and Company in, in Oconomowoc. So make sure you check it out, uh, the newest one, the wild one in Nick Petrie's what is, series. What is oh, that? That's not a pen. No, no, these are these are ice scrapers. This is uh, <laughs> a little a little swag. So if we if oh, you come to Boswell you. tonight, if you're one of the first hundred people to show up, get a, uh, you will get have a, a commemorative ice scraper. Nice. Oh, I, necessary. I like it. Yeah. Some yeah. ice on the way. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It.